comprehensive, albeit maybe falling away a bit in the second half? Yeah, it's pretty much the way I assess it. Um, I think for me, the conditions are really tough, but you um, you get a lead like that at half time, and you you really do want to go on with it. It's a um, it's easy for us to put up in the box, but um, clearly with the players, they 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 really gave a great effort and. I'm super proud of the effort they gave. Um, th third quarter, I felt we dropped away a little bit in some key areas that we focus on. We addressed it at three-quarter time in the last quarter. They they got all those. So, um, yeah, job done for me and, and move on for next week. But a great effort by the players. Where did that first half, particularly that first quarter, come from where the girls just seemed to be right on top uh, across the ground? Um, I think from a, a build-up from the last few weeks, we've we sort of got it week one, dropped away for a little bit of the game against Melbourne. GWS, we, we got a little bit of momentum. You could sort of see it coming. Um, and I felt this week we were able to do it for a bit longer and probably got about 80% of the first half right. And then with a com combination of what our structure was behind the footy, we were able to um, not allow them to gain momentum. And we went on it for you know, a bit of a run from in, from um, Richmond's turnovers, which gave us opportunities, and that's the main thing in football is to get yourself opportunities going forward. Uh, so that's where I felt it came from. You made it very clear winning a flag is on the agenda. How, we know how close this competition is in terms of percentage and the like. How important is it to make these big statements in terms of big scores and wins? Yeah, it is important. It's important from the perspective of momentum and the season being so short, you need to grab momentum and take it for as long as you can. And I think building from the last few weeks, like I said before, I still feel we've got a step to go. Like that we're, and no disrespect to Richmond Hawks, they're, they're just a brand new club and I know how hard that is. Um, I feel like we've still got a step to go though with, with a few areas of our game. Um, and when we get that, who knows, but we might not get that, but it's it's something we've got to strive for. And we're pretty strict in inside the four walls about our, our KPIs that we, there's six or seven really key KPIs that we um, hang our hat on, if you like. And we're not quite there yet, but we're a lot closer than we were last week, which is great. How much of your planning went to Katie Brennan and how did you see that fuel today? We mentioned it before the game. Um, just from my experience with Katie Brennan, I was super worried and you know, she's a great player she's really good for the game but I've been on the end of a, a few Katie Brennan's thrashings over the years so um, I was really mindful of her today so we mentioned it um, from the perspective of making sure that she's manned up not letting her get some run um, running chains of footy if she got a, a possession not a, to let her double up and get the hands back that sort of thing but look I um from a football lover, I hope that she just remembers that she is a superstar and it will turn for her at some stage, so, yeah. A, sorry, as an opposition coach, just to briefly touch on that, do you see her, do you, are you more worried about her when she's up forward or in the midfield? Because we know she's playing the midfield. Yeah, I, I think a bit of both. Um, even at, going back to Darabin, she did that. So I don't think, I mean, the focus has been on the combination this week, but I don't think it's too dissimilar to what she's done. The Bulldogs probably played her more, more forward. Mm -hmm. But from my perspective of the VFLW, she was always a mid-forward and dangerous in both spots. So I, I get what Tommy's trying to do with that. With the season, I mean, you, you dropped one earlier. Do you feel like you're on a tightrope? And if so, like, would you like more games to solidify? Do you think it's too short at the moment? Because if you drop one, you, you sort of want eggshells until the rep for every round going forward. Yeah, it's yeah. a little bit a little bit like a big bash, isn't it? It's, it's sort of, you need to win to stay relevant, really. And I think... Dropping two games would probably still get you there. Dropping three, you're probably relying on percentage. But I actually enjoy the format from the perspective of um, you've got to be on, you, you've got to get your pre-season right, because once the pre-season's done, you need to win. And, yeah, we had a hiccup in week one, and I immediately, you know, we feel the pressure because you, you'll want to win. But I think also from a longer, I think a longer season at some stage will come, but... I don't know that it's this time of year is the right time of year to do that because of the heat and the conditions right. and things like that. Caitlin, uh, 19 tackles inside 50. It must be a real focus for the four line this week. Yeah, we've probably been the, the weakest link of our um, lines over the couple, last couple of weeks. So I think during the, the week, we really had to focus on our forward work. And I think we started off really well. And that's what we want to do. We wanted to start off 
um, really well and, and pressure really high. Um, and I think we did that and it was really exciting. And it felt really good too because that's what we've been working on. So to show it in a game is, is really important. Um, just to have that over four quarters now is the goal. Few goals yourself uh, must be nice. It's always nice to get the reward for effort. It is nice, but I was obviously on the end of them, so it was all the hard work coming up the ground, and um, it's really nice to see the stuff that we work on during the week, um, chaining the ball um, by hand, by foot, and then getting um, the goal at the end is really rewarding. How good is Ashley Dell? Oh, she is a superstar. Um, unfortunately, we missed her last year um, in round two. She got the, the foot issue, and then yeah, to have her full, fully fit and firing is really exciting and she's really dangerous, you know, you can put her forward um, midfield or even on the wing and, and she does the job. Just on that, the expanded so season, what window would you mm. say if we did go longer, yep. where, when would you play it? I don't know, it's, it, it comes down to a lot more things than just yeah. answering that black and white because your ground availability, um, you know, money in the competition and, you know, despite what people think, the AFL doing a marvellous job with that sort of stuff. They're, they're very collaborative. We all get a say, um, all have our opinion at meetings and things like that. And they can only do what they can do. And um, I think ideally you would like to, I, I actually think that it's not too far from where it should be, but it would be ideal to marry the VFLW up with AFLW right. so that the players that aren't selected get an opportunity to play and show their worth. Um, but. As for a time of year, if we could, if we, ideally if we could go a little bit later, it would be better, I think, just to get the heat um, of, of mm. normally February's pretty hot because um, it is taxing on the players. Really hot. Yeah. <laughs> Today was ridiculous. Yeah. Um, I remember saying to my player in like the end of the first quarter, I was like, my mouth feels like a desert. And she goes, mine too. Like, and it's just, you'd have a joke about it, but it's actually so hot outside. outside. Um, and running around for a full, full game is really taxing, um, no matter how hydrated you are. So I love the heat. But yeah, it can get quite difficult at times. How do you recover from that? What's the yeah? What do you do? Oh, eat well, sleep well. Make sure you get a big sleep tonight. Just recovery, but in the club tomorrow. Yep. Um, and get ready for Gold Coast next week. Do you guys? I guess it's for both of you. Do you think it does affect the skill and I guess the way the game plays out? Because I see it with soccer, especially like games in the heat of the day. Even the fittest players are going to struggle to deal with those sorts of conditions. Would you like to see that maybe more night games as well? Or? Oh, I'd love some more night games. <laughs> I, I find it really difficult playing at this time of day, like getting all my um, stuff ready for the day. So when do I eat? All that sort of stuff. And then obviously being the hottest part of the day is three o'clock. Um, so night games would be really nice. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think it's um, it's something that we're still developing as an industry. What What is the best time? And um, clearly we've got to fit in with, with broadcasters and, and ground availability again and all that sort of thing. But it's an interesting one, and I don't know that we'll find the answers out in the next couple of years. I think it's one that um, yeah, the, the powers of be will, will come to the decision when they when they can, when when they you know, basically get the information and from this season and and trial what works and get the feedback from GPS and um, and marry it up from an injury perspective. But I think the skill level would still be the skill level. I, I think it's more just the physicality of repeating it week after week and once you get to 11 to 15 you're, you're really playing a, se a full season mm. so any the two teams that go through to play 11 this year they're, they're going to be really taxed by the end of it I've got no doubt about that at all it will involve um, a little bit of luck injury wise as well Scott back to uh, Arden Street for the first time this year next week yep. it'll be exciting and you've got the Suns who are playing a lot of yep. confidence and have just come off an amazing draw with the Lions they play a very similar game to you, but we're not quite as established. Yep. How do you see that contest going? Yeah, really good. It's um, it'll be great to to host at Arden Street. It's a, a very special place for all of us, and part of your induction into North Melbourne as you taught about the history of the the place. And um, yeah, it'll be a special day. And the, the Gold Coast Suns have been fantastic, and um, I, I think they play a really good brand of footy. And um, just the way they attack the contest, they seem to uh, enjoy their footy, which is a big thing. We always talk about gaining momentum and belief, and they have that. So they'll, they'll be a really tough opposition. And yeah, I think it's the expansion teams to me have um, have been, I, th I think, a shining light on the competition as far as just their the way that you know it's tough to come in. We did it last year, but just the way that they attack the games of footy and. The scoreboard today, if you took that out of it, Richmond really attacked that game really well. They they got some great young talent and um, I've, I've had something to do with Cody Jux, for instance, right through her, her junior development and 
um, players like that, and you see them come through, and you can. It's just glimpses. It's a possession or a tackle or a position that they, the way they position themselves, and that they'll be absolutely fine in a couple of years. It's um, Tommy's done a great job to, to structure them up, and there's going to be some bumps on the way. And um, I think with all the expansion teams, that's probably going to be the case. Uh, and Gold Coast at the moment have got a little bit of belief and momentum, so you add that into a youthful group, and they're dangerous. So uh, it'll be a good game next week. Daniel. Yeah, well, we probably could have played Danny. Um, it's just a, a, it's a calf that, it's it's like the type of injury where you, if you assess it and do you take the risk or don't you? And the medical advice was that if she had 10 days off completely from last Tuesday to next week, to late next week, would it be better? And the answer was yes. So the, it was simply just, you know, Beth Lynch was fresh and ready to go. So we just decided to make the change there. Any other injury concerns? I saw Grace Abby came off at one point, but any other concerns come from the game? Abby Green? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, Abby Green, yeah. yeah. Um, no, nah, she's fine. She's She usually gets herself hurt in some way in every game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she does. <laughs> but no, she's, she just got a knee knock to a good knee, um, but it was just a bump, so it was more just making sure. I think once you get one sore knee, you, you panic about the other one any time it gets a little knock. But everything else I think was all right.